you know, if you've ever run your own server, there's this this dream, right? Running your own email, having total control, total privacy. But what if that whole idea of independence is actually a myth? Let's get into why running your own email server today is nothing like you'd expect. And that right there is the whole story in a nutshell. It's not about your technical chops or how perfectly you set up your server. Nope. It all comes down to this one single kind of brutal fact. This is the quiet reality that smacks so many people right in the face when they try to go it alone. So here's the real kicker. You can build a technically floss server, follow every single rule, check every box, and your emails still just vanish, poof, into thin air. So why does this happen? Well, that is the mystery we're gonna unpack right now. Okay, so let's start with the dream itself. Why do so many of us even want to do this in the first place? The appeal is super powerful, and honestly, in 2025, it looks easier than it's ever been. I mean, the promise is awesome. Complete control over your own data. It's a real badge of honor for any sysadmin. And with these modern tools like Proxmox Mail Gateway, it looks deceptively simple. You can spin up what looks like a totally professional setup for your alerts, notifications, maybe a dev environment, and it feels perfect. That is, until you try to send one little email to the outside world. And that's when it starts. The mystery. This is that moment every self-hoster just dreads. The moment your perfectly crafted email leaves your silver and just disappears. You've done everything by the book, right? The server is configured flawlessly, the email is written, you hit send, and then crickets. Nothing. It doesn't bounce back. You check your logs, no errors. It's just gone probably swallowed whole by a spam filter or just silently dropped by one of the big providers. And this is the question that drives people absolutely bunkers. You followed all the rules, you set up all the protocols correctly. So what happened? Well, the answer has almost nothing to do with your server's configuration. All right, it's time to meet the real bosses of the email world. See, there's this invisible system that decides whether your message ever sees the light of day. And it doesn't care one bit about your perfect setup. It cares about just one thing, your reputation. Okay, now what's so fascinating about this is the huge disconnect it shows. We all focus on the technical checklist on the left, right? Getting our SPF, DCAM, and DMARC just perfect. But what the big players, we're talking Google, Microsoft, what they actually care about is the stuff in the column on the right. Things you can't just configure. The history of your IP address, the age of your domain, and this kind of vague but all-powerful idea of sender reputation. The best way to think about sender reputation is like a credit score. A brand new server, even a perfectly configured one, has zero credit history. To these gatekeepers, a fresh IP address starting to send mail looks exactly like a spammer who just set up a new operation. You're not doing anything malicious, you're just unknown. And on the internet, unknown automatically defaults to untrusted. And this right here, this just brilliantly sums up the core problem. Receiving email? No problem at all. The internet is more than happy to deliver messages to you all day long. Your server just needs to have the right address and an open door. But sending mail from you? Whoa, hold on. That's where the internet gets suspicious and basically asks, who is this person and who can vouch for them? So if you can't build up that trust quickly on your own, what do you do? Well, you find a workaround. A solution that's so common now, it's pretty much the default for almost everyone, from the hobbyists all the way up to huge corporations. That's the secret. You just stop trying to convince the world that your brand new server is trustworthy. Instead, you let someone who is already trusted send the message for you. And this is done using something called an SMTP relay. Your server basically hands off the email to a specialized service like Amazon SES or Mailgun. That service then sends it from their own warm, reputable IP addresses. So to the recipient spam filter, the email looks like it's coming from a trusted friend, not some suspicious stranger. And the difference? Oh, it's night and day. On your own, you've got this unknown IP with zero reputation, and your deliverability is just in the gutter. But through a relay, you're using an established IP with a high reputation, and bam, your emails actually land in the inbox. It just works. So. Here's the crucial point to get. Services like Mailgun aren't really selling you SMTP technology. That part's actually pretty trivial. What they're selling you is credibility. You're paying to borrow their good name. You write the email on your server, but you're outsourcing the belief that you're legitimate. So this brings us to our final point. This whole reality, 
it completely changes what independence even means. The true cost of running your own email isn't measured in server hardware. It's measured in the currency of trust. I absolutely love this line from the source material. It just perfectly captures the situation. You can be 100% compliant with all the technical protocols, but if the vibes are off, you know, if your IP is new, your sending volume is weird, your domain is young, you're still going to be ignored. It's a system that's based on memory and social proof. And here it is. This is the punchline. True independence? It's an illusion. The real choice isn't whether you're going to rely on a provider. The real choice is picking which provider's reputation you want to attach your messages to. Everything else is just plumbing. And it just leaves you with this fascinating thought, doesn't it? In our world of automated, protocol-driven systems, maybe email is the one place where who you know and what the world remembers about you still matters more than anything else. It's less about code and more about a digital handshake. What do you think?